Semiconductors are the new oil. Nearly every electronic device these days uses semiconductors. The semiconductor market has grown in waves in the past few decades, pushed first by computers, then the internet, then the cloud, and now AI, growing from $50 billion in revenue in the 1990s to about $500 billion today, a tenfold increase. And now the AI revolution is ushering in a new era for the semiconductor, with the market projected to grow at least $1 trillion over the coming years. Any business that wants to stay relevant will need to implement AI into their operations, increasing demand for semiconductors. So far, the big winner from all of this is without a doubt NVIDIA. Its stock is up over 600% since 2023 on the sales of their AI GPUs. The company now almost has a $3 trillion market cap. Out of 64 research firms covering NVIDIA, 58 rated as a buy. But history tells us to be careful with this kind of extreme optimism and such spectacular increases in price. This is the price action of Cisco in the late 1990s, who was also rising on the internet euphoria. Cisco was selling routers during the internet boom. You can imagine why investors were excited about the future of the company. Of course, after these spectacular gains, Cisco's stock ended up collapsing, and the stock never really actually came back from the levels it was trading at when it peaked in 1999, even up to this day. And instead of Cisco, other tech companies like Apple, Amazon, and Netflix thrived during this period when Cisco was struggling to stay relevant. Now, this won't necessarily play out for NVIDIA, but we can probably say that a lot of optimism is likely already reflected in the stock today. And this is a stock that doesn't come with zero risk. About 46% of NVIDIA's revenue comes from just five customers. That is highly concentrated. Microsoft and Meta alone account for about 28% of NVIDIA's revenues. In fact, Meta itself has recently come out to say that they are likely spending too much money on AI. Mark Zuckerberg said recently, there's a meaningful chance that a lot of companies are overbuilding now and that you look back and you're like, oh, we maybe all spent some number of billions of dollars more than we had to. This is a risk for the company, especially with more semiconductor companies coming to compete with NVIDIA in the space. We'll look at three companies in the semiconductor space that could benefit from the same trends as NVIDIA, but that are currently flying under the radar. AMD, for example, is one of NVIDIA's biggest competitors. They also produce GPUs, and the stock is clearly more reasonably priced. Its price-to-sales ratio is around 11x, whereas NVIDIA stands at 38x. This means you are paying about three times as much for each dollar that NVIDIA earns compared to AMD. AMD's GPUs offer better performance per dollar compared to NVIDIA's. It has greatly improved its GPU performance recently with RDNA and RDNA 2, and it is now a strong competitor in the GPU market. This makes AMD's GPUs appealing to more budget-conscious businesses that need to implement AI. So AMD seems to have a lot going for it, being a cheaper company compared to NVIDIA and having a cheaper product. But NVIDIA does have a significant advantage over AMD with its CUDA platform. CUDA is a technology developed by NVIDIA that allows their GPUs to perform complex calculations very quickly. This gives NVIDIA's GPUs a substantial edge for tasks like AI. NVIDIA also built a strong developer community around CUDA. NVIDIA has absolutely stunning revenue growth. Just in 2024, it managed to triple its revenues, and that rate of growth is for now forecasted to continue at the same pace heading into 2025. A lot of this can be attributed to NVIDIA's staggering 78% profit margin. For every dollar NVIDIA earns, they only have 22 cents of costs. The rest is profit. AMD's profit margin is about 50%. Now that is higher than the average 22% of the semiconductor industry, but nothing comparable to NVIDIA. Now, AMD might not be as profitable as NVIDIA, but it could be that it is deliberately keeping their profit margins lower in order to undercut NVIDIA's higher prices. Now, instead of looking at a direct competitor to NVIDIA, let's examine a stock that benefits directly from NVIDIA's success. This stock is Applied Materials. They make the manufacturing equipment and software that is needed to build semiconductor chips, the building blocks of GPUs. Applied Materials is the largest global semiconductor equipment supplier. As NVIDIA continues to grow and invest in GPU technology, it could directly benefit Applied Materials. Applied Materials has a price-to-sales ratio of 7, making it a much cheaper stock than both AMD at 11 and NVIDIA at 38. Despite its lower valuation, Applied Materials still has an impressive profit margin of 47%, showing its strong position within the industry. This is because Applied Materials has a strong competitive advantage that protects it from rivals. Or as Warren Buffett would say, the company has a strong moat. A moat is a competitive advantage that allows a company to protect its market share and profitability from competitors. Applied Materials moat is the high substitution cost associated with replacing its equipment. Applied Materials customers would need to completely overhaul their factories to switch to a competitor's tools. This would be very expensive, ensuring customer loyalty. So we have one semiconductor stock that competes with NVIDIA, one that benefits from its success, but now let's take a look at another company that is in a completely different area of the industry. Texas Instruments. They produce electronic components for cars, appliances, military equipment, and other devices. So they're not in the AI game. 
but they have products that are cost effective and highly reliable. While other semiconductor companies are trying to push the frontiers of advanced chip manufacturing with 7 nanometer, 5 nanometer, or even 3 nanometer chips for AI applications, Texas Instruments built out its niche by producing 45 to 130 nanometer chips. These chips are not cutting edge, but much more widely used and in big demand. This means that Texas Instruments doesn't require the high capital costs typical in the semiconductor industry for developing new chips and technologies all the time. They also have a diverse customer base, mainly in the industrial and automotive sectors. This reduces the company's risk from the volatile semiconductor market. Texas Instruments has a 10x price to sales ratio and a 60% profit margin, showing a strong financial health. In summary, NVIDIA dominates the AI GPU market. AMD is competing for the same market share as NVIDIA and trying to undercut their prices. Applied Materials is selling the equipment that's required to make the chips in the first place. And Texas Instruments is in a whole game of its own. Although these three companies are cheaper and less hyped than NVIDIA, which means investors are taking less risk with them, it is yet to be determined whether these can actually rival NVIDIA's spectacular growth.